Even when using Google Scholar as a data source, publications and citations will still differ significantly across disciplines. And thus the h-index, which is a combination of the number of papers and citations, will also differ significantly across disciplines. This graph shows that the average h-index for a professor in the life sciences is similar to that in the sciences, but nearly three times as high as for a professor in the humanities, and more than a one and a half times as high as for a professor in the social, sci in the social sciences and engineering. However, if we use an individualized and annualized H-index instead, one that, as I explained earlier, corrects for differences in the number of co-authors and different career lengths, these differences are much smaller. In fact, four of the five disciplines show very similar indices, with the social sciences now equaling the life sciences. Only the humanities is still showing lower metrics. However, rather than being a third of the life sciences as for the H-index, it's now more than half of the life sciences. So going from a comparison of citations in the web of science, where the life sciences outperformed the humanities with a factor of 50, i.e. 50 times as many citations, this has now been reduced to less than two i.e. an individualized h-index in Google Scholar that is twice as high in the as in the life sciences as, is it, as it is in the humanities. For the social sciences, the change was even more dramatic, going from a factor of five, that means citations in the life sciences being five times as high as in the social sciences, to being equal to the life sciences and higher than engineering and the sciences. So whilst we should always be careful in comparing metrics across disciplines, if we do compare them using comprehensive data sources and metrics that correct for different publications and citation practices are essential. If you want to read about this in more detail, just follow the link on this slide.